this week on Two Bears, One Cave. And then the best is when you break someone's spirit. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, you know, I was cracking toilet seats left and right. Where Cracking the seats? I just land too hard on them. Leanne's going to hear this and, and be like, <laughs> and be livid with me. 100%. Cheers. It's always fun when it's the show you tuned in for with me. Not as always, but I'm always happy to see him. One of the only celebrities that is outspoken about his support for Hamas. It is Burt Kreischer, everybody. <laughs> I just said to someone, yeah. I just said to someone, it's so nice to not know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you see people, people are like, I don't, I don't even know. Like they are in it. Like yeah. on their Instagram, they're hemorrhaging followers. They're fighting with people. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm watching dude climbing up uh, light posts, ripping down flags and spray yeah. painting. And yeah, it's pretty wild, right? And I really am not really sincere, yeah. sincerely sure what's happening. Yeah. It's kind of nice, right? Yeah. Stay it out of it. Must be like, must be like, uh, Oh, I was gonna, that's a really bad analogy. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's wild. It's uh yeah. Shit's crazy, Tom. Shit is so I'll wild. What, I'll tell you what I'm focused on. Shit is crazy right now. You just you just did like <laughs> shit's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the the segue of uh, every other <laughs> comic is like everyone's man, worried about their the middle, and they're like, so shit's crazy right now. Shit's real crazy. <laughs> I was looking at someone's Instagram feed today. I won't say her name because she's a very like she was a very funny influencer, mm -hmm. married to a very famous actor, and uh and she is fucking hard as. And as I as I read her post, I'm like, oh, I don't even know about that. I did a post about how beautifully my beard was dyed. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I'm out of touch. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice though, right? Should like, I do it? I've I've never well, done No, no, it. no, no. So here's the key about dyeing a beard. Yeah. What a pivot. Right now, people are like, wow, they're really not going to talk about the Middle East at all. Mm -hmm. Um the key about dyeing your beard is not dying at all. Right. It's about subtly dyeing it. Taking big patches. Like you're you had a strong mustache. Yeah, this is all everything is the way it is, right? So you don't like, touch it at all. No. What is your is your hair gray? I don't know. I haven't seen it in forever. What was the longest you let it grow out? Now? Yeah. About a few days. Really? Yeah, four or five days. And you shave it yourself? Yeah. Clippers or razor? Uh, I use the the electric the electric one. You know that where your hand molds to it. Yeah. And I just go in the shower. Oh, for real? Yeah, because it's it's easy. It, it gets a com really smooth. I can't believe cut. I still have any hair. Let's like, see, you always cover it up, though. Yeah, I know, because it just looks perfect. It looks perfect with the cut. hat on? looks fine with the hat on. But uh, it's it's thinning, but I can cheat it. Mm -hmm. I can cheat it. Do you ever wear without, you ever go without the hat? Yeah, yeah. I, all my specials, all when oh, I do right. stand-up, yeah. But I do when with, you do stand-up, you do it hatless? Yeah, I do it hatless. I, do, I like wearing a hat because I think I look cute in a hat. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. It's about, it's about, my daughters have a, a, a thread, a baby walrus thread, and they will hose it down with times I've said I've looked cute, mm -hmm. and they take a picture, and I do not look cute. It's usually so when wait, I where do you where do you die? All that's, here. I, that's the best question I've been asked in my entire fucking life. Oh, okay. So uh, here's what I do. Just for men, brown. You don't want to go black. You don't want to go. Yeah, too don't dark. go black because you don't have black hair. So that would be crazy. <laughs> but, dude, but that's what a lot of the pro wrestlers do. What? Like Randy Macho Man Savage for a period of time. Seagal. Oh his my god. Hair dye. Oh my god. Is the On our best. cruise, we had a costume night and there was a couple who dressed up as you and Push. I saw this. And it was so fucking good. I saw and this. And it was such a deep cut. Yeah. Because no one really got it. And then I didn't get it at first. And then I was like, shut the fuck up. Because he did the Seagal one. He did the Seagal and then she was uh the from her special. Yeah. Um but the key to dyeing your hair is leaving gray hair there. Yeah, you can't go you all the way. You can't deny it. It's like it's like when I shave my pubes. I trim, I trim. So what I do is I, I've, I've watched a lot of barbershop videos. I comb it out. I comb it out, right? Mm -hmm. And then I trim that. I just kind of give it a fade a little bit. Yeah. Then I go, so like, if this is dick and balls, right? Mm -hmm. This is actually good. This is dick and balls. What I do is I Caesar it out like this. Mm -hmm. So everything under here is shorn. Everything's bald right here, bald right here, shaft, totally fucking bald. And then this is the key. I go up an inch. Uh huh. I go up into this area yeah. and cut in the pubis. Inch, yeah, into the pubis area because it looks like you have an inch more of cock. Yeah. And then it's a fake. And if you push that fat pad, you actually see more dick. Dude. If you push it in, you're like, whoa, whoa, there's some dick in there. Can I tell yeah. you that's the workout I'd invest in? Yeah. Six minute dick. Yeah. And it's just, it's just whatever workout. Like, I don't even know, like a bicycle. I think if you actually really 
reduce your body fat to like, you know, first you, let's say you get to 12 and then you go under the, like if you, if you, uh, hardcore, then that pad would be completely gone. Dude, that's why young dudes have big dicks. Just because their body fat level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you almost got to forgive all those guys that molest them. <laughs> just, <laughs> just joking, guys. Just joking. Yeah. But, but like, like young dudes, like young dudes, 18 yeah. years old is the best dick you're going to have. Yeah. Take pictures now, guys. I think anybody who is willing to take nude photos at any point in your life, if you're like, I'll do it right now. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to. You're crazy not to because you're never going to look better. Dude, all I do is take nude pictures of myself in there the sauna. When I have sauna cock, it's up against the window fucking shoulders like this that's why i look the best every time i go like this it doesn't look that good you're like eh. but you go down i go down like this yeah and then uh and uh, and then i get almost hard almost hard like three quarters like yeah Sorry, well like more. seven eighths okay seven eighths so it's it's full but it's just not up it's yet. full it's just not it's ready to sail it's still in the dock gotcha like fucking sails are up yeah speaking of sailing i kind of want to get into sailing i don't like sailors you don't like sailors? Well, no, they're nice people. I'm saying whenever I see a sailboat. <laughs> oh, you don't like sailboats? I always go, that looks cool, but I don't really want to be on it. I want to be on one with a motor. Because I've been on sailboats. It's just fucking, I feel like it's chaotic. That's what I like about it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's like, cool. I love the idea that there's, a, there's an energy when you, because I was looking at, like, what it seems happens is when you get to a certain level in your life, you take flying lessons. <laughs> That's what it seems like happens. Are you taking flying lessons? Yeah. Of course you are. Right? And Can I, I try like, a chokehold on you? No. Just real quick? No, absolutely not. And I won't do it all the way. No, wait. What? Hang on. Are you taking jujitsu now? So? Are you taking jujitsu and you're taking flying lessons? I have a midlife crisis. I'm 44. Holy shit. Wait, hold on. You're taking jujitsu. Let me just try one on you. That, but you tell you tap. Hold on. Just let me see if I know how to do it well. <laughs> What? No, you're trying it out on somebody who doesn't know how to defend himself. I know, but like, okay, you just tell me. Hey. Okay. All right, see, it's getting better. God damn it. You know, Isla choked me out in front of Leanne. My boys have tried choking me out. <laughs> They're both in it. Are you serious? <laughs> the three of you are taking jujitsu? Yeah, yeah. And you're fighting them? No, no. God, the energy a fucking ba a child boy must have in jujitsu is insane. Ellis does arm bars on me all, and I'm like, "Yo, I've already broken one." Like he's <laughs> he's intense. Yeah. Wait, both your boys are taking jujitsu. Yeah, you're taking jujitsu. You're taking flying lessons. Yeah. What else? When did you realize you're having a midlife crisis? Um, I guess because people say that whenever you do anything that's like out of what you've done before. That's like, uh, you know, adventurous. They go, you're having a midlife crisis. And then my thought on that is like, yeah, how could you not? Yeah, it's the same thing happens when people go, you've changed. And you're like, yeah, yeah I, I don't, yeah. It's the whole fucking point. But I think if you're not having a midlife crisis and you're in your 40s, then something's wrong with you. You're because, not working hard enough. No, it means you have no self-awareness. There you go, <laughs> yeah. It means you have no, you're not appreciating... Like the whole thing about a midlife crisis is you go, oh, I'm going to die. So I need to, you know, do these things because I don't have that much life left. Yeah. There's a life is fleeting. Right. So I'm saying if you're not somebody who, if you're like, oh, no, I, I'm not interested in those things. I'm just going to do anything I've, everything I've always ever done. Then it's almost like you're saying, I just don't care that this is going to end. So There's I'm a just, lot of people that think drinking is their thing. Like that's their, the, the, they just go. Like I told you about the time I was in the cardiologist waiting room and, the, and I was nervous and the guy was like, what are you nervous about? And I was like, what if he tells me I have to quit drinking? The guy looks at me and goes, heads up, you don't. I was like, what? And he goes, you can drink yourself to death. No one's going to give a fuck. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, and then the cardiologist told me, just so you know, everyone in that room is people that didn't know when to stop. I got told, uh, hmm. I got told the other day, I want to go back to your midlife crisis, but I got told the other day, um, there's two types of people. There's addicts and there's partiers. Partiers stop when the when the party's over. Yeah. And then addicts just never stop. That's true. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I stop when the party's over. So like you're I, a partier. Yeah. I go, well, the party, I'm not drinking by myself in my room when everyone, no one's there and then going like, I'm going to jack off. No, the difference is with you is that you are the person who goes, come over. 
so that the party can keep going. Do you realize my one takeaway? I had so many sober realizations. Yeah. Like over my time of sobriety. Yeah. The number one takeaway. Yeah. Is how often everyone wants to go to bed. This is your takeaway? Like everyone. Wants to sleep. Everyone wants to sleep. And you? Never. I never want to sleep. I never want the party to end. That's I want okay. everyone to stay up with me. I want to have one more drink. I want everyone to like, yo, come on. And then like, I'm cool with going to bed, but like at two in the morning, if you let the most people would go to bed at like 11 o'clock. Yeah. Like most people don't, don't want to just like, I this is my favorite part of the tour bus is get on the tour bus and being like the bus leaves and I'm like one more drink. And then the best is when you break someone's spirit. Yeah. Where like Pete's in bed and then you open his curtain and you're like, ah, you're not going to be a bitch, are you? And he's like, guys, I'm trying to sleep. And you're like, one drink. Everyone get in Pete's bunk. And then everyone gets in his bunk. He's like, fine, fuck it. I'll drink with you. Yeah. That's my favorite yeah. is breaking their spirit. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Just fucking, that's the funnest, the funnest, the funnest. I would love one semester in a fraternity house. Just one semester in a fraternity house. You could do that as a show. I don't even need to do a show. I could do it for free. No, I know, but if, but that would be a hit show. Oh, Bert, back, back frat, in the frat dad, frat dad, yeah. And I just show up, and I, I. By the way, I don't even need to be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I want to be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, game Sun, day, game day, game day, Are and a big fucking... school too. You know, like big Southern school. You got to go where it's like Ole it's Miss. a scene. Ole yeah, Miss. Ole Miss. Fuck. I'd love oh to go back to Florida State. Yeah. I mean, at Florida State, I've, I've been there. Right. But I would love to go to one of those. I would love to do. I Oxford, would love to do. Oxford on a Saturday game day. Dude. Incredible. I would love to do Friday, Saturday at different colleges, different fraternities. I get in set Friday. Do you know what I did? I haven't announced it yet. So my, the first half of my, of 24 is announced. Yeah. For the fall. I booked some college gigs. The gig is Friday so that I can go to the game Saturday. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. So, and I'm going to, I'm going to like some big ones. Can I tell you, this is what's wrong with me. Yeah. I just said to my family and to everyone, I'm going to take the fall off. Yeah. No, I don't want to. You should. Nope. No, you should. Nope. I don't need to. It's good for you. I have a tour bus. I I'll know. just meet you. Okay. At all your gigs. Okay. Okay. And we'll go to college game day every fucking Saturday. I mean, I'm excited. If you're okay, go to tomscurry.com. <laughs> find is, have you announced them yet? Not the fall ones, no. Okay. When they la launch, yeah. I will I will be taking my tour bus to a fraternity house. I'll okay. be spending the night with you boys. Okay. We're going to go out hard Friday night. Real hard. Like yeah. fucking real hard. And Saturday morning I will be the first up. I will get breakfast ready for everyone. I will have pre party. But here's the thing what I, I are you worried about? Why are you already saying no? No, I'm not worried. I'm not okay, worried. Keep going. I um. I also, I I went out. I, I went out for drinks. But your drinks or my drinks? Well, my drinks. But yeah, I was drinking vodka, on ice, just enjoying and uh, that just nice cold crisp vodka. There is nothing better. It was delicious. Than the cleanest drink you can have in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey. But here's a dirty whore who loses her shoes. Yeah. Okay. Gin is a chick you didn't realize was overweight until you wake up the next morning. <laughs> tequila yeah. gives you an STD. Yeah, tequila's wild. But fucking vodka. Vodka's a gentleman's vodka drink. Vodka yeah. leaves before you wake up with a note by your bed. Yeah. And you smile and you go, God, I wouldn't mind fucking her one more time. <laughs> we are supported by Black Buffalo Zero. If you're 21 and older and chew or dip just like me, check out award-winning tobacco alternative. Black Buffalo Zero is everything you love about dip. Nothing you don't. No compromise. Long cut pouches. And they're all made from the edible green leaves, food-grade ingredients. And they come in classic wintergreen, mint, straight peach, and even blood orange. Black Buffalo sells their products online and ships directly to your door on blackbuffalo.com. You can use our promo code two bears for 15% off your first order. They also sell their products in thousands of retailers across the U S check out the store locator to find a location near you. We found ours at the AM PM while we were on the road. And I'll be honest with you. It's just the ritual for me, the ritual of opening the can, the flavor, the taste, the spit, everything about it 
reeks of great conversation with your bros from me. Honor your rituals with Black Buffalo. One last time, that's 15% off your first order with code 2BEARS at blackbuffalo.com. Black Buffalo Zero products are intended for adult ages 21 and older who are consumers of nicotine or tobacco. Are you looking for a meaningful gift this holiday season that your loved ones are actually going to use and enjoy? Search no further. I have the perfect holiday gift. It is one I've given my mom, my dad, independently. I just sent one to my daughter, all our friends, everyone in our friend group, all my family, they've all, both my sisters, the Skylight Frame. Skylight is a touchscreen photo frame where you can send photos straight from your phone and they appear in seconds. You can even preload a bunch of photos before the box is even open. So when they put it up, all of a sudden, all the pictures show up. It's such a great way to present a gift. It is the perfect gift for grandparents, hands down. It's intuitive and super easy to use. And grandparents will rave about it. My parents are 75 and 74, and they set up theirs in no time. They swipe through photos. You can tap see a new photo sent. Tap the heart button if you want to say thank you to the sender. It's a delightful way to enjoy your family every single day. We're so confident that you're going to love Skylight Frames that they even offer free 120-day returns. And as a special limited time offer for our listeners, get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash bears. You get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com slash bears. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com slash bears. I love vodka. Vodka's great. I haven't had vodka in so long. Here's the thing. Can I tell you what kind of surprised me? What? So every time I have a few drinks, like... I'm always like, man, tomorrow's going to suck. I'm always thinking about the recovery. Not with vodka. I'll tell you this. I was fine. <laughs> you do. I was fine. Like 100%. I mean, yes, I had a few waters before bed, you know? So I, I, that's the key. Yeah. That's the, I mean, for real, that is the key. But I had a little buzz and I was like, I was like, man, I wonder if tomorrow I'm going to be like, and it's just a world of regret. I was fine. Dude. When we did our first weight loss challenge, I drank Tito's and soda through the entire fucking weight loss challenge. <laughs> you did? And I lost weight. Mm hmm. And and I'm telling you, it's it's the cleanest drink. My only problem is uh, airplane vodkas. What what is that? The airplane vodkas. They don't have, they don't have good vodkas on airplanes. Oh. That's the only problem I have with airplane vodkas. Um, yeah, man, I, you just made me want to drink. I, and I, you know, it's interesting. I've been I, so I, I monitor I monitor myself. Um, I, not to get too into the weeds, but like I started, I started, I keep a happiness journal and I notice things about you do? myself. Yeah. I've, I've kept it for a while. What is that? Uh, I write down times, things that make me happy, things that make me anxious, things that bring me joy, things that I really like. I write ideas in there. Like I, it's just a way to quantify. The easiest one to explain is like one morning I made the girls breakfast and, uh, and then they went to school and I was, I had a cup of coffee and a cigar out in my backyard and I was writing in my happiness journal and I went, God, I really feel great. I feel great making them. I feel like of service. I feel great making them breakfast. And I should remember that. This brings me happiness. So then like two days later, I'm hungover. I got doing shows at the store. I'm hungover. The girls are up and I was like, hey, are you making breakfast? And I was like, I'm, I think I'm going to just sleep. And I hear Leanne, let him sleep. He's, he was out late last night. But in my head, I know that I'd written it down. That brings, makes me happy. So I went, stop. Get out of bed. Go make them breakfast. And see if that works again. And I made them breakfast. I, my hangover went away. I'm laughing. I'm having coffee. I'm, we're all joking. They go and get in the car and go. And I go, God damn it, it works. So it's like quantifying happiness. So what I do is I quantify um, when I stop drinking, the first five days is the most interesting because you have an impulse. You know when you started losing weight mm -hmm. and you would go to the, you find out how many times you actually went to the fridge. Sure. Or how many times you went to a bag of chips and you're like, oh, wait, I can't have chips. I'm trying to eat clean. Yeah. So I, I, it's easy to do with weight loss, but when you drink a lot, there's a lot of times where your brain will say to yourself, Hey, we should get like a, we should have a drink tonight. Like, it's almost like, like, uh, Oh, Hey, Oh, Hey, and like, you know, you, oh, I should have a drink. And then I would quantify that. And then I'd sit with that feeling and then go, what is that? Like, I was trying to figure out what it is. And then I, there were false ones, like almost like a false limb where you feel an itch. Yeah. And you and it's just like going like, and then those go away real quick. Like and false what? False False happiness? feelings of false feelings of wanting to have a drink. Oh, I got you. It's like where your brain goes, we should get a, open a bottle of wine tonight. And then you're like, oh, I don't really need that. You know what I'll do? I'm going to get on the treadmill. I'm going to walk. I'm going to watch Full Swing on fucking Netflix. 
I'm going to feel good. I'm going to get a good night's sleep. I'm going to sauna before I go to bed. I'm going to get up and I'm going to push it tomorrow. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the right thing. You know what? Maybe we'll take a hit of weed and smoke a cigar. That'll, that'll be the same feeling. And then there's what you just did to me is when they're real. They're real. That's, that's the Lord talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Where you, where you brought up vodka and my brain said, you know, we haven't danced with her in a while. Mm -hmm. Like just her. No soda, <laughs> no cranberry, yeah, just her. Just, just me and her. Up. Just me and her and ice. Maybe a little bit of a lime, just to like a bow in her hair, a flower in her hair. It was good. It was nice, man. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to remember this. I'm being dead serious. I want yeah. you to remember that you did this to me tonight. Okay. No, because 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 this one's a real one. Yeah. And I and I haven't had her in a while. Yeah. And 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 I fell in love with her. She really introduced my. I told you this a long time ago. Uh, I was sitting on a plane. <laughs> I was sitting on a plane. <laughs> Drinking a, a Heineken and this gorgeous man next to me, named, named, his name was Tan. Gorgeous man next to me uh, said, you know what? I could go for a drink. I had a long one last night. And I was like, yeah. He goes, vodka soda. She brings it to him and I said, vodka soda. I was like, what the fuck? What are you, Chelsea Handler? And he was like, uh, it's in my contract. I was like, what? And he goes, as a male model, it's the best drink you can drink to lose weight. And I went, oh, I'm going to murder this Heineken and I'll have a vodka soda too. And so that was when I first met her, but she does make you feel clean. Yeah. Makes you feel good. It was a good, it was a good buzz. We're going to get fucked up tonight. We are going to be drinking. Are you going to get Burt drunk? No. Why don't you get Burt drunk? I have to do no, things. But no, like, I'm curious. Do you, do you, I'm being, I'm being serious, sincere because I've done it where you just like, I've done it where you go. There's two things. I want the buzz, right? I want the buzz. I want to feel the buzz. I want the sparkle. And then there's times where you go, no, everyone's drinking. I understand that that would make things easier just to be a part of the team and we'll all drink tonight, but I really don't want to drink. I yeah. really don't. I don't have an interest in drinking. I wish I could have some water. I wish I wasn't over at this play at guy's house. So I had to listen to him talk about assisted suicide. I wish, <laughs> by the way, maybe the best sober conversation I've ever been in in my entire life. Really? Oh, yeah. At a guy's house? At a guy's house. He was like, listen, suicide's not a bad fucking option. And I was like, what? And he was when you get older. And, was, and, and then his wife's going, stop selling people on suicide well i having seen like somebody wither away yeah, yeah. i would have i would have wanted to check out do you think when do you think on the list of people i call when my dad dies where do you think you'll be on that list i don't know that's really personal to you i know but you've been through it but i mean whether or not like your order has, i mean i don't like to guess where i'll be in your order i mean you're probably gonna Talk to your siblings, your mom, your wife, maybe who's, your kids. Who's, how, how is, you never called me when your dad died. Yeah, because like you're not really, you know, you get like, it affects everyone differently. Did and you I drink? Was, did I drink? Like that when I, like when, when it you happened. You found out you pour a drink and be like, oh no. fuck. What'd you no. do? So we were at the. Oh, we were, you knew he was dying too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We knew he was dying. And then they were like, it'll happen in the next, like the doctors and it was like it'll happen in like the next day so i was there in the morning and let's say he died like around noon from there we went to um a funeral home that was gonna do and you know you just we had some things already picked out but we had to do a few other things we made a few other so like, there's a lot of business yeah the more of it like you know there's the thing about dying is that the people who are alive, but with dying on the horizon, you know, that's why like, it's so important to have your, your stuff in order. Like a, your, you know, your estate planning kind of stuff yeah. because people who die without that, like I think the story goes that Prince had no will, you know, right. I'm just using him as an example. Then you just have tons of people being like, we're all apart. Like, you know, they're trying to like chop up this estate. Oh, I'm going to have, and, I'm going to have a reading of my will, just like an eighties movie. Yeah. Where everyone's there and they're like, who's that guy? And they're like, well, man, everyone's sitting there and they're like, okay. Yeah. And pe I want people fighting for the money. I'm going to have a scavenger hunt. I'm going to have like, yeah, the more of that. And though, then I'm going to have, I'm going to have the, the, all the electricity in the house drop out. Yeah. And then one person's going to die also. Uh -huh. And then they're going to be like, who did it? 
and then they find out like that, that would be fun. Why why does anyone make their death fun? They, they're not thinking like you. They um <laughs> they're <laughs> they're just like man, I don't know why I'm such a bummer about this whole death, but why don't they have why don't funeral homes step it up? You've got wedding planners. Yeah, no, it's why real bu- funeral it's, planners. It's bummer city at funeral homes. <laughs> it's, bummer city. it's really a bum show. And but like you have to have that stuff. And then if you are you know, I'm saying thinking ahead, you have your plot, how you want to be, if you want to be cremated, if you I mean, want to. Do you know where you want to be buried? Not at all. I haven't no, thought about well, it. But I do have. I so much time now that I don't drink like I used to. How much time do you think you have? Like, a better question is how much time do you think I had if I didn't slow down? If you didn't slow down? Be real. I think you would have had real health issues um, start to evolve and like show themselves in this decade. You know, like real, like, like, like from 50 to 60. Yeah. And we're talking like, you're not slowing down. Not slowing down. Yeah. I think, I think your health would have taken like a turn during, during this decade. Um, That's and then, the one, the one, my one takeaway. And I, and I mean this to all our fans, cause I think all our fans have watched us change and, and like grow and, 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 and digress, get hurt, yeah, go, yeah. get surgeries, go through shit. But the one thing I think sometimes is like, I wish I could gift, I wish I could gift just the um the space to everyone like this once you get kind of healthier you get a little distance from your bad behaviors yeah and and you start like it's almost gives you time to exhale and i would love to gift everyone what it's like to like not wake up super fat because i know what it's like right now and i'm by the way i'm still obese i'm still obese i understand that everyone yeah. watching this goes dude you're 235 that's fucking fat as fuck that's down from 270 275 really when we look at i love these things so much <laughs> by the way yeah. but but like but it's when you the amount that it takes off of you like just walking yeah. or getting up showering you know showering is the big thing i can wash my asshole again <laughs> I couldn't wash my asshole. Really? I could like I'd get back there and it would hurt to get back like there. Your I could, shoulders and your back would I'd hurt. I'd be like, uh 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 my feet How don't hurt. Stairs, right? Don't stairs make a difference? Forty pounds is a lot of difference on a going up a flight of up stairs. A lot of sta- I don't work for UPS. But I'm saying if you're in a stairwell, like when, when you you've when never ever been in a fucking stairwell. You never go up a flight of stairs at all? No. Mary Balls miss from our friends over at Manscaped. The holidays are approaching. But what if I told you? that the celebrations are starting earlier this year. It turns out the perfect gift does exist. And who else to bring it down your chimney than the leader in below the waist grooming? Keep calm and let your balls jingle this season with Manscaped's brand new Performance Package 5.0 Ultra featuring the new Lawnmower 5.0. Watch all your wishes and mistletoes kisses come true. Unwrap the gift of smoothness this season with Manscaped and the 5.0 is badass. I used it the other day. It is awesome. All the same technology except the light's a little different. There's another button for the light so you can turn the light on when you need it. I think that keeps the battery probably going longer. I It's the, all I'll use. Their Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle for the man who deserves it all, including in this special sack is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Trimmer, Manscaped's Liquid Formulations, and two free gifts. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code bears at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code bears manscaped. Get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. We've all been there in the bad seat, you know, like being smushed in the middle seat of a station wagon on a long trip or the last row of a cramped plane. That's the absolute worst. Or you get in the car with somebody and you're just kind of cramped up. You feel it in your neck. You feel it on your shoulders and you can't wait for the ride to end so you can finally stretch out. Lexus's new TX is a three row SUV that considers every single passenger, no matter where they sit. The new TX features comfortable leather captain's chairs and a spacious third row. They've got leg room, elbow room, cargo room, and there are cup holders and USB chargers for all. Finally, a three-row SUV where everybody wins. The first ever Lexus TX. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. I like how stairs, like I said, you know, when you go to the space station. What am I, one of your pores? Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I don't walk upstairs. Okay. I fucking hang out on the first floor. The girls are upstairs. I don't go up to their rooms. Okay. Yeah, I don't really fuck with stairs. The, you're really saying this <laughs> like stairs are out of the realm of possibilities to hey, run I'll into. T- you know, it's very interesting you say that. Today I did the stair climber. <laughs> Today I did the stair climber and I thought, I actually thought this is fucking useless. Really? Like I was like, who the fuck is doing stairs? Really? No, I don't fuck with stairs. And, uh, <laughs> but getting out of a chair is different. Getting out of a chair. I actually feel it. I actually feel cause I do, I do a lot of squats and like goblet squats. Were you, were you at the point at your heaviest where you would have a split second thought getting into a chair? Like, is this a supportive chair? No, but I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> during fully loaded yeah there was a guy that came backstage <laughs> and he's he's a big guy it was, mm-hmm. well he was big he was like probably three bills mm-hmm. and he, he sat in a chair and he broke it he, as he sat in it it shattered and it smithering i mean like like comic book all four legs went squirt yeah and the fucking back fell off and everyone laughed except for me and big J. We looked at each other like, and looked at him. We're like, it's okay, buddy. Yeah. We're there. Like, we, it's, it's. That could have been us. Uh, that could be us. Well, thank yeah. God we didn't sit in that chair because that could be us. No, uh, getting right now. Well, you know, I was cracking toilet seats left and right. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was cracking toilet seats because I, I don't, when you're that fat, by the way, there's the minutia of fat, like stretching a shirt. These are things that fat guys do. Stretching a shirt before you put it on. Mm-hmm. The idea of putting on pants where you go, these are barely going to get around my ass. And yeah. then ha- going through your wardrobe and having absolutely nothing to wear. Putting on a suit and right. realizing, I feel like I'm in a fucking prison. But nothing connects more than cracking toilet seats. Where Cracking the seats? I cracked so many seats. And then what would happen is I, we, I just land too hard on them. Like okay. I'd, I'd go to take a shit and yeah. I'd go wham and then it would crack and then and then you couldn't find the crack but then when you got up it would it would pinch your ass your leg uh-huh. dude the I other crack. one is a uh, uh, fat guy move is putting your your foot on your leg to tie your shoe that's a total fat guy move dude, like being you, able need, to, you need to reach it here you can tell yeah. you can tell fat guys yeah you, know, you can tell some fat guys by their stomachs but yeah you can also tell really fat guys all their shoelaces are tied on the inside and the inside of their, yeah. the inside yeah, yeah dude i stopped tying shoes all together i just everything was a slip on everything really? was a slip on it's, it's why fat guys have such hard bad feet problems shoes were meant to be tied they're meant to be tied not too tight, but snug on your foot. Yeah. And when you slide into all your shoes and you're overweight, you're putting so much stress on your feet and you're getting plantar fasciitis, dude, uh, sweatpants are such an enabler. <laughs> They're enablers. Yeah. Cause you put on sweatpants. You're like, I'm not that fat. I can sit crisscross applesauce. Yeah. And then you put it's jeans. all comfort. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you put on jeans and you're like, like I would look at you in your fancy clothes and hate you. <laughs> And like fancy, you, like you mean pants? No, no, no. Like you'd put, you'd put on, you'd put on fancy clothes, like slacks. Uh-huh. You come to the do two bears. Yeah. And I was like, what are we dressing up? Is there a fucking red carpet? <laughs> you have a collared shirt on with like a fucking <laughs> beige jacket. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, cool. Uh-huh. And the first thing I did when I lost like a significant amount of weight yeah. is I went into a bunch of jackets that must have stood there. Like they were never getting called to war. Yeah. They were just sitting on the side. Like How it's good Dunkirk feel? going, we're not going. Dude, I'll wear one tonight. It's crazy. It feels so good. Dude, I, I I was, when we were promoting the machine that's streaming right now on Netflix, it was number one for like three weeks, but you can check it out and then boost it back up to number one. It would totally help me out. Just even, I don't even want you to watch it. Just hit play on your fucking Netflix. Yeah. Do that with our specials too. Don't even fucking watch them tonight. Tonight, everyone watching this, just go to Netflix and hit Sledgehammer, hit hey, uh, Razzle Dazzle and hit the machine and just let them play. Just let them fucking play. You know what that does? It increases our fucking money. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great the, uh, the, um, what was I talking about? Uh, oh, oh, when I was promoting the movie? Yeah. I swear, I swear to God, I bought all new wardrobe. I had a stylist come in and dress me for all new wardrobe. And I went to one show and I couldn't button the shirt. Really? Of a shirt I had just recently bought. I would balloon up five pounds, six, seven pounds in an evening 
in an evening. And if I was on a plane, I was fucking swollen. Yeah. I didn't realize how red I was. Yeah, you did look super red before. Everyone was like, dude, you're really red. And I was like, I know. I'm working hard. This is what hard work looks like. What are you fucking color shaming me? Uh, <laughs> that's, what I love, that's what I love about black alcoholics mm -hmm. is you can't tell. Yeah. They just stay black. It's one of the great things about being a black alcoholic. Black alcoholics are the fucking best. <laughs> when are you going to do drink champs? Not, no, not mean it like that. But like, when are you going to do drink champs? I mean, I'd love to. Anytime. Oh my God. But I want you to get fucked up. Okay. I want you to get fucked up and I want to sit in the back with all Nori and, and DJ EFN's group and talk shit the way they do mm -hmm. and do that. Um, no, uh, getting out of a chair was a big deal when I lost weight. Getting into the gym and being excited. That's and a good thing. Like, and having gains. Like, and like being like, oh, this Did is I, good. I didn't realize that when... Um, so it was my dad died in December of 21. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's when he died, December twenty one. So oh, we were you were still in L A. No, I had moved here already. Okay. So I, I um, yeah, I moved here. I moved here in May of twenty one. So he died in December twenty one, and I'm not even tying the two together, even though they could be. But like, I didn't realize that I'm back on tour, and I have like a trainer with me, but I'm just like not dialed in on eating, you know, and and like going at it. I'm gaining weight, gaining weight. And I had a suit that I had bought a few months prior. And then I wore it on one of the arena shows. Dude, like the, the day I put it on, it's like, pfft, like, I'm, I'm like, oh, and I'm like I'm trying to put, and I was like, fuck. And that was like, you know, March, April of, of 22. Yeah. So just in those few months. And then I look at like, clips from them and i was totally ballooning up. we should do we should do a group thing we should do a group thing we don't need a sponsor although a sponsor would be badass but we should do a group thing in january a group thing a group thing what do you like mean a, like a what, like dry january we didn't do sober october we did do sober october but i already wasn't drinking so like it wasn't it wasn't any fun can i tell you it was so lax this year between us was, yeah no one ever even talked about it that i broke my sobriety <laughs> on accident and i was just like oh who cares like yeah i met up with somebody and they go do you want to have a drink and i so wasn't thinking because we weren't talking about it that i go sure i have a drink i think maybe half of it and it was the next day where i was like oh it's october and i just forgot yeah it it, it it's fun when you do a group challenge i would love to do a group challenge here's what i want i don't know if there's a way to do this maybe we can see if uh if i still i'm a big still whoop guy I know you wear yours every now and then. Yeah. But I would love Whoop to make my numbers public. I'm sure they can. I want them to make the numbers public. And I want our fans to have their numbers public. I want to be able to like everyone check in. I think you can if you accept like people who. But we should do like a real challenge at the beginning of this year with us and our fans. For trying January? Because like, yeah, I'm going to party my dick off starting tonight. I'm going to party pretty hard. Through December? Probably. Okay. I mean, I mean, figure it's holiday season. Thanksgiving is going to be a fucking wash, right? Mm -hmm. Tonight, me and you are getting pretty fucked up. We are. We are. How we fucked up? Pretty fucked up. I want you to start laughing when you, those uncontrollable laughs. Where you're like, I did not expect this to happen. Oh and so, and so, and then, and then Christmas is going to be a fucking blowout. New Year's Eve. I you have, are you in Honolulu? Yeah. You're in Honolulu, New Year's Eve. I think, I don't think I'm doing a show, but I'll, I'll have a party at my house. I want to get fucking lit, but I want to go January 1. I want to go January 1, do dry January, and and I'll probably bleed it into our Super Bowl show. Okay. And the first time we drink again to be our Super Bowl show, but get our fans activated too, because it's funny. I'm sure there's people watching this going, oh, fuck off, right? But Because yeah. I did that when you lost weight. I was like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> like, yeah, great. You got your shit together. It's, you know what I mean? But like, do something to activate like our group, because mm -hmm. because everyone can use a little extra oomph. A little something motivation, group motivation really works. We don't need Joe and Ari. We can just do me and you, like a dry January, just for the Bears, just for the fucking people that are with like our guys, and but activate the community and really like because I love when like like people post shit and it, and then you see them doing better. There's a bunch of guys that when I I guess when I started losing weight, I love when I started losing weight. Everyone's like, if that fat fuck can do it. And then they started losing weight and then they lost more weight. And then you go like, wow, that's inspiring. You know, we should do dry January. See if we can get like a, see if we can get a sponsor so everyone can get on the same shit. Like whoop, I go to whoop immediately. Cause that's my favorite one. 
but start 2024 solid. That would be cool. Yeah. I get into a, a bunch of these uh, boy. Uh, hang on. I get into a lot, a lot. I don't know the right way to say this. A bunch of young men who are like party guys, but they're all workout party guys, and okay. I fucking love them. Are they gorgeous? They're good looking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They're shirtless. Yeah. They're shirtless. Okay. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some anxiety, a little sadness about it. But adding something new, a positive to your life can counteract with some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, to make you feel like you have the tools to manage everything going on. I was talking to my daughter today. Uh, she's at college, and she was saying that uh, everyone in, everyone's talking about seasonal depression. And I went, yeah, that's right. It is getting darker, and you can't spend as much time outside as you did earlier. It gets darker earlier. It's colder. Everyone's inside. I told her, I told her what I'll tell you right now. Therapy is fantastic for that. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash bears today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash bears. They're fun. There's okay. one guy lives in Miami. One guy lives in Tampa. You just like, I just follow them. They're all fucking college dudes. I don't even know. They don't look educated. Okay. But they're, they're probably, they're college age and they're just fucking party guys. There's something about that when you haven't realized that's your spirit, dude. That's what it is. I mean, yeah. Like, you're really... We're going to have so much fun in the fall. Yeah, going from tour to tour. Oh, you're ju you're jumping on this for oh, sure. Oh, I'm jumping on it. Yeah. I'm jumping on it. I'm getting ready for. I'm building for something. What I'll do? Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm at least doing one. I'm at least doing one with you. Okay. And I'm gonna spend the night at fraternity house. Are you doing Tallahassee? Mm -hmm. Are you doing Tallahassee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bro, on Friday. Bro, can yeah. I roll out the red carpet for you in Tallahassee? Yeah, of course. <gasps> Holy shit! Can you tell I have a uh, in? Does it look, do I look like a, oh, I thought it was the other side. Anyway, um, Tallahassee, I went, you know, I went to a Florida State game. Of course I know. And it went, it was fucking, of course it's, it's funny because, you know, when we ran into Coach Norville at the, at the, Day Day he was like, he was like, like Lucy Goosey. Hey, yeah. Tom, Bert. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. He lifted his shirt up and he was like, hey, look at my tits. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and, and then when I saw him on game day. Yeah. He's dialed in. Yeah, of course, man. He went, Bert, good to see you. Boom, dabbed yeah. me up and he was, he was on. Yeah. He was on. Focus. Do you forget how fucking studly these fucking football players are? Exactly. When you see them on the field, like just the, the fucking legs. When I was at uh, Penn State for my show last year, they were like, you, every time it's a big D1, they go, you know, I try to, I'm like, hey, can I check out the football facilities? Yeah. So they set it up and they just had practice. Like practice just ended. So they were in the locker room and they brought us in there. And I, I'm a fucking 43. I'm walking through this thing and I was like, oh my God. Like these, these kids dwarfed all of us. We all were like, oh God, this is fucking great. And then the kid's 19 and he's like this, you know, like yeah. in the locker room. Like, oh, what's up? Oh, I love your stuff. And you're like. Like you're meaning like, nice and you to forget meet you. you're as old as his dad. Yeah, you're like, nice to meet you, son. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's really nuts how the D1 athlete is is built different. Like you don't run into them every day. Uh -uh. They're they're a whole different like cut. Really, they really are. I hung out with DK Metcalf. <sighs> I rode an elevator with him. Really? And I was like, pull, oh, you can't pull up a picture. Such a freak show of a human being. Uh, I was like this in the elevator. I was like, holy shit. DK Metcalf came up. It was like, you know, whatever he said, you're like the best living comic of our generation. <laughs> I love the way you speak to multicultural groups. And yeah, it's, I mean, you just translate very well. Yeah, yeah. That sounds just like a DK quote. He was like, dude, fucking shoulders are on point. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. You don't have to say that. And he was like, oh, it's undeniable. And then he said to me, I said, <laughs> I said, 
he just got done practice. And I said, what are you doing after this? You're going to go take a nap. And he looked at me like, huh? <laughs> like he, he was, uh, he, you can see it in his eyes. He's like, I'm a different specimen. Than uh, you. Yeah, yeah, and he goes, no, I'm going to work on ASL. I said, what? And he goes, on my free time, I work on American sign language. And I went for fun. And he goes, yeah. He was like, and then I'm going to get another workout in. I got another class I'm taking. I go, the fuck's wrong with you? I was like, you should be like soaking wet with pussy juice. I think he gets time for that too. I think he works it in. He is fucking gorgeous. <laughs> Gino Smith was there. Gino Smith. Gino Smith. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> What's going gorgeous. on, man? Gorgeous. I mean, just, just, just different type of men. Do you ever hear Marshawn Lynch talk about Aaron Rodgers? Marshawn talk about Aaron? Yeah. No? Oh, so badass. So he goes to Cal, right, when his freshman year, they bring him out for, like, one uh, uh, first-team defense versus first-team all offense, and they bring Marshawn on. He's, he's fresh out of high school. They bring him out, and they go, all right, we're going to run power, power right or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Marshawn Lynch is like, shit, I'm in. Like, there's a list of, quarter of running backs that could be back here, but they brought me in. Yeah. I'm running, and he got so excited because I guess power. I don't know anything about football, but power right is like the fucking move he wants, right? Okay. And Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback, and Marshawn Lynch runs the wrong direction, and Aaron Rodgers does, is such a fucking gangster. You know him; he's my best friend. And then he does a back move and hands it off backwards to Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch runs for a touchdown. Place goes nuts. Coaches come up and get in Marshawn Lynch's face. That's not how we do it at Cal. You fucking went the wrong direction. And Aaron Rodgers, what a gangster, to this freshman, he does not know, says, that was my fault. And they were like, what? And he was like, it was my fault. I called the wrong play. I went the wrong direction. It, was, it wasn't it was his fault. Marshawn Lynch is a freshman, right? Yeah. And in front of the whole team, they start bitching out Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers takes it, and he's like, comes over to Marshawn, he's like, welcome to the team. And from that day forward, Marshawn Lynch has never said a bad word about Aaron Rodgers. Makes sense. I just saw him talk about what a shitty relationship he had with uh, Russell Wilson. So Yeah, well, what the fuck? What was that? The story he told, it was Marshawn. I think he was doing... Um, Shit, Club uh, Shay Shay? Yeah. Club Shay Shay is a badass podcast. Yeah, yeah. So he's... So, Jerry Sharp's arms are fucking jacked. Dude, he is 55. And I saw him doing... He's 55? Yeah, he's doing incline... Dude, I have a friend who's 55 who looks like fucking garbage. <laughs> garbage. Garbage. Yeah. He's, he is an old man at 55. <laughs> you're like, you're like, do you need a sweater? <laughs> do this you know guy, what I'm talking about? I think I, think I have an idea. <laughs> this guy, Shannon Sharp, 55 years old. He's doing incline dumbbells so with 130s and just doing reps with it. And you're like, whoa, like this is pretty serious. But the story he told him about, you know, they had a real thing, obviously, uh, in Seattle. Yeah. Like a, a, a fucking great team. And he's talking about that relationship. And he said, it's funny because you told the Aaron Rodgers story. In this interview, Marshawn Lynch says that after uh, one particular game where Russ had just like not a great game, Marshawn reached out and was like, you know, I know that this was like not, first of all, he asked for he's he asked for Russ's number from like player personnel guy, and they're like he'll call you, and then he, Russ called him from an unknown from a, like a private number, and he said that he told him like I know today wasn't like what you wanted, but you know, like I got your back, and he said Russ was like what? He's like well you know what I'm saying like today wasn't what you wanted as far as like a passing game, but like I got your back and like you know if I have a game. Or it doesn't work out for me, you got my back. And he said Russ was like, huh? And and that it kind of just ended like that. So he goes, you know, we had a zero relationship off the field. None. None. That's crazy. Yeah. You he, know, he was like reaching out to be like, don't sweat, right? Like we're yeah. I got your back even if you have a bad day. And he was like, Yeah, I don't that's know. That's all I'm looking for in life. Yeah. That's all I'm looking for. That's yeah. all I'm looking for. Can I tell you what's wrong with, not with, what's wrong with Russell Wilson, but what's great about Marshawn Lynch? By the way, I'm, sp I'm, you know, I'm spending all day tomorrow with Marshawn Lynch. No. I'm spending all day tomorrow with Marshawn Lynch. He's the greatest. I'm hoping that I can blend tonight's drink mm -hmm. into tomorrow's Hennessy afternoon. Because I will drink Hennessy and blow clouds with him all fucking day. Yeah, it would be a fun day, dude. I will, 
I will. I will get you. Better leave with some cool Marshawn stories. Fucked. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get his phone number. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get. I cannot wait. I cannot fucking wait to hang out with Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Um, Marshawn. Um, I I think the problem is here's the problem with greatness, right? Is that like Russell Wilson's? I, I, no slight on him. He's. You can't slight greatness. The greatness just operates differently than the rest of us. Sure. It true. just does. It's exhausting. It's Do you ever it's, seen, by the way, DK's supposed daily routine? No. You haven't seen this? Uh-uh. He wakes up, I think he has coffee, some water, works out, goes home, gets dressed, goes to practice, has some more water. And they're like, when are you eating? He's like, oh, like at 5 p.m. And then he has some candy too. He likes candy, which is like a Marshawn thing. He's like, yeah, I like to eat candy, like yeah. Skittles and shit. Marshawn used to take a shot of Hennessy, two shots of Hennessy before a game. I couldn't do that. And I like drinking. I couldn't do that. It's fucking crazy to me. But yeah. The, the, the problem is, the problem is with greatness. And I, I watch only because like, I obviously everyone aspires to greatness, right? Like I watch you. You ever watch Full Swing on Netflix, the golf one? Yeah, no. You watch certain guys like just uh, like uh, Jordan Spieth or like Tiger Woods or uh, McElroy or like these these great guys. They're uber competitive, also. Like it's it's something broken in your psyche. Jordan, you can't you can't take anything other than number one, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it just leaves such a fucking field of of frustration for you unless you are number one it's, and it works out for the most of them they're always number one but they don't always 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 turn number one yeah i think this is a problem with men to young men right now i mean this out of such respect i was saying this to leanne the other day walking out of a target we were we were, went to a target and she, and she was and i was like i don't mean this as an insult we were talking about why are we so happy like what what is the thing that makes us happy like how do you gift this to other people and i said this to her and, I, and it came out as an insult but i mean it as a compliment is that right now, if you're listening, just lower your expectations. Do not think. That's what fucks up so many young dudes is they want the baddest bitch in the bar. Mm-hmm. Not realizing all the fucking shit that comes with the baddest bitch in the bar. All the shit. The baddest bitch in the bar wants the baddest motherfucker on the street. She doesn't even want the baddest dude in the bar. She wants the baddest motherfucker in the street. You're never going to be him. If you lower your expectations and just go, I just want someone who isn't going to cheat on me, doesn't burn steaks, and can fuck, then you, you, there's a ton of those around. Right. There's a ton of those around. And I think- And that's what you shoot for. That's what you shoot for. Shoot for like just a chick that gives really good hand jobs. Don't look for the baddest bitch in the bar. The baddest bitch in the bar sucks. What's the hottest chick you ever dated? You can't say your wife because they know we're all going to say that. What's the hottest chick you ever dated? And then let's fuck her up. Let's let's destroy her. Because <laughs> that's what. Because every guy, every guy in college listening right now is like, whoa, 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 whoa. You think about it right now. The chick you'd love to fuck, right? You'd love to fuck mm-hmm. the one you're like, fuck. That would be nice. No, it was a disaster. Always is. Yeah, it, it the, the, I went out with a um, a model in L.A. I was, had a huge crush on her. Yeah, that, believe. oh, it sucked. The, already, already. Okay, yeah. ready? I'm going to I'm gonna break it down. Already, if you have a crush on her, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, it was, you're it was like fucked. that. Because you, what you're doing is you're New Year's eve her. You're saying this is going to be the, yeah, this it's is exact, it. Yeah, exa- you're totally right about this, actually. It, it, and it was, it was a total, it was, and then here's the thing, like, you, you get to know someone like that, the baddest bitch in the bar, and you lose your attraction to her like you know you're like oh i i, I know that you're gonna say she's pretty but i i've hung out with her yeah so you, you know you start to find her less attractive people can't even understand how do you not think she's saying you're like because i fucking spent time with her yeah and she's a fucking she's a mess and she says and she does fucked up things where you're like yeah we're like that real people don't do that L- literally literally yeah. like says fucked up things and you're like what the fuck and then you start to go like oh like you start to lose the attraction goes away. I said it to Leanne. I said, you know what I love about your body? And, and <laughs> I know this is going to be fucked up sounding. <laughs> I, I already know. 
what, how fucking uncomfortable is this what you said? Because I'm gauging, I have an idea. Well, I you know what I love about your body? How it's so not perfect. They're like, no, yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. I because, know. because there's I know. like, the whatever the flaws are, I find sexy. Like right. I find, but so, so, but, but here's the deal. And I, I'm, I'm talking right now to a 25 year old dude, a 30 year old dude who's like starting to do good life, got aspirations and thinking what I need to fill out my fucking resume of life, what it's going to look like when I'm 50. So for me to be happy is I need the baddest bitch is in that resume. I'm top sales. I'm eating yeah. good. I'm eating clean. I got a good group of friends. I got a nice car. I got an apart, a condo. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm accruing money in that condo. Got a great stereo system. I got shit dialed in. What yeah. I need is a bad motherfucking bitch. Yeah. I, I, want a, I want a chick that other dudes are like, oh, fuck, yeah, right? Yeah. Here's, what's, here's the flaw in that. Mm -hmm. what, you, what you gotta do is lower your expectations and say, this is what I can get. What's the best of what I can get? Like, what's the thing, the hidden thing? I said to Leanne, I love your body. And Leanne is not a fan of her, of her own body. And I, like, she just is like, I could do this and do that. And I said, and there's, and this is so fucked up. But when I get Leanne naked, it's like a secret. Like she doesn't show that to everyone. Right. Because there's vulnerability there. Sure. So when I do get her naked and she cuts loose and this bitch has been cutting loose lately. It is, it's like she's trusting me with a secret. Yeah. And and when I heard, I thought I was into brown nipples, right? Like I thought brown nipples were the fucking key to life. Leanne's got pink nipples and they're fucking, pink nipples are a secret. Like when you see pink nipples, you're like, you're like, oh, this is sex. Brown nipples, you pull those out in a beach in Brazil, everyone sees them and you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, brown nipples. Mm -hmm. They're not bad, but right whatever it's like brown nipples don't they can you can whip them out at a par a bar her her nipples are nipples that people don't just show all the time because they're kind of hot and sexy you know what i mean okay like like it's like uh it's like i don't know it's uh, but my point is and i kept saying this to her i got what i wanted because i i i wasn't i wasn't expecting much i i <laughs> <laughs> Leanne's gonna hear this and, and be like ah, and be livid with me. I know. But like, but like, I know what you're. I'm intentions sure she are. did the same thing. Yeah, I'm sure she said. But that's the key to life. The key to life is being happy with what you have. That's the key. Is 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 not grateful for what you have. Grateful for at what every you have. level. Yes. And and realizing what will make you grateful. Yeah. You don't need. Trust me when I say, there. I, I don't. First of all, I will say. I, I have to say this. I don't know if I would be where I am without. Uh, without uh leanne I, so like i can't look at my life and go imagine if i just plugged that chick in i don't think i'd have it i don't think there's a lot of chicks that would be like no 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 this is my guy <laughs> the guy that drinks himself blind on a plane shows up phones it in with our kids passes out wakes up doesn't know where he is <laughs> and is like i think i shit my pants <laughs> yeah. like she does, i don't think there's a yeah. lot of chicks that would settle for that yeah but leanne did the same thing i did and was like this guy's good he's he's self-correcting he loves the fuck out of me. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the key is like, I wish I could articulate that more to, to young men would go, you know, that chick that like you dated during the summer who had a great sense of humor and you yeah. could go to target with, and you could laugh nonstop yes, with that's, that's the, the one you want. That's the one you want. You yeah. want to be in a target with a chick and just be laughing at stupid shit. Yeah. Not the chick that goes, are we shopping at target? Yeah. No. And, and that's, you don't want that chick. No, the, you know the great like i was lucky in that i um, i dated i dated like great girls like, yeah. like even from high school through college like if if it if it was longer than a few weeks it was because you could go to target or just sit around and do nothing cuz that's really when you vibe with somebody that yeah. you that have that if if the person is like what are we doing here and 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 asking you to kind of like be someone you're not then that's obviously not for you that's not a good relationship you know? there's so many there's so many times that people look at what they have what they have and think and they judge it by what other people think they have yeah like so like if if let's pretend it's a car right say you just love a fucking civica a civica 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 civic civic say you love your civic you love your civic but then as you pull up in your civic people say things about your civic and you're like you're like 
it's it's a good car and they're like okay and then they get in their jaguar well jaguars break down at a alarming rate yeah okay and that's every other chick is a jaguar but if you love your civic then go fuck you i love my civic this is a badass civic and that's what you told leanne you're like you know what you're my civic you're my civic yeah you're my honda (laughs) civic put that on a card (laughs) yeah you're my honda civic yeah and i and your station wagon. There you go. Do people forget how great station wagons were? Station wagons were the shit. It was. It's kind of sad. What, car, that what they... car is Christina? <sighs> Can I tell you what car she is? Oh boy. No, I know what car she is. I think she's a Jetta. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was one of hers. She loved. <laughs> no, that was one of her cars. Yeah. I, I, I got to take back the Leanne Civic because that no, sounds so bad. But Chris, can I tell you what Christina is? Do you remember the Mercedes your dad gave you? Yeah, the old... Uh, it's a badass car. It was old SL500. And if yeah. you know shit about cars, yeah. you know how badass that car that is. That car is rad, dude. It's yeah. a badass car. Yeah, It's a badass fucking car. And by car. the way, the funny thing you pointed out, she fucking loved that thing. It's a badass car. My dad had one of those cars. Really? It's, I remember, it's the fucking hottest car. I remember like in that era because that was uh, late 90s seeing those and just being like in awe like because that's what like and i felt like derek thomas had a sl5 you know it was like the badass Dude, car it's the baddest fucking mercedes ever made yeah i fucking love that thing and Le- and uh yeah she she loved that one she leanne that. is i go okay leanne you're not a civic okay because yeah, totally she, she, she's not gonna get that she's yeah. gonna go like a civic well she's like a raptor you know what she is what? she's a now hold on not renovated <laughs> She's a Ford Bronco, like a, a 70, 68, a 68 Bronco, uh-huh. like the fucking cool ones that people are re- refurbishing. Yeah, yeah, the resto mods. She ha- I'd yeah. love to refurbish her. It'd be so fucking awesome. <laughs> you want Just a in, bunch of new interior, new, new interior, new yeah. exterior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she said to me the other day, you know what? I, I, I wouldn't mind. She's going to kill me for saying this. She was, she's never talked about plastic surgery. Yeah. She goes, I tell you what, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind getting my eyes done. And I go, and I, did not realize what I was saying. I, and I looked at her and I go, that's where you'd start? And she went, what? <laughs> and I was like, I'm just saying like that. That's where you'd start. Oh, like I just said it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Leanne's a Bronco because like, <laughs> she's like badass. It like when you see it, you're like, oh, that's a cool car. But it's, it's a little bit of a beater right now. <laughs> but like, no, but no, but I, God damn it, I'm fucking this up. She's, she's all, all she's, terrain. She's just, yeah, she, you can, she's like. Off-roader for sure. On the weekends, fun as fuck right mm-hmm. take the top off on the weekends fun as fuck um she's but like when you get in her you're not always, very safe you're always <laughs> <laughs> the seat belts are just lap belts <laughs> the windshield wipers don't work <laughs> sometimes when you turn her on you gotta mm-hmm. i had that in a fucking special i think but <laughs> leanne's a bronco that's very good and what do you bronco. think you are uh, I'll tell you what I am. Okay. I'm a Model T. Like the 1930s I, or 10, uh, whatever? I have accrued in value exponentially. Oh, that's very good. Like I, like, I think when she got me, she was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? It doesn't even start. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, someone's like, I think she probably saw like other chicks walking by going, yeah. hi, damn, you have a Model T? And Leanne's like, is it good? And they're like, fuck yeah. It, yeah. It's on an arena tour. She's like, <laughs> oh shit, I better fucking shine my Model T up. Yeah. I better take care of this Model T or this Model T will start fucking Porsches. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't realize I don't want a Porsche. Right. You I like, want a Bronco. You want a Bronco. I want a Bronco. I want a Bronco. I pull her up to Valet and I'm like, you can park it anywhere you want. Nothing's going to happen to it. <laughs> She's going to be so fucking mad when she hears this. Of course. Anybody, any reasonable person. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think Bush is going to be happy that she's a, a old Mercedes? She, I think she'd love that. Yeah, she lo- she'd love it. Yeah, she, it's a European, but she is. She loves that actual model. <laughs> we were talking about, we were at our friend's house. Their friends were Asian only because food's important to mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Like they're really like into food and they were talking about their relationship. And what I was trying to say was i should use this as a bit um what i was trying to say was being married to leanne is like like they were talking about what dish your wife would be and i said being married to leanne would be is like salmon 
Like I, it's really good for you. It's really good when done run, right. You can dress it up with a lot of shit. It's really fucking good. But all she heard was salmon and Leanne doesn't like salmon. She was like, I ain't salmon. Yeah. And I was like, no, you are like, it's, I could eat salmon every fucking night. Yeah. Every night I could eat salmon. Sure. Especially if you did, if they crust the skin uh -huh. on top with a little sea salt. It's so simple and it's so fucking good. So simple and it's amazing. Of course you can overcook it and it'll be dry as fuck yeah. sometimes. I'm fucking, sometimes and if you get it on a plane, you're like, I'm going to get sick. Yeah. But, and then Leanne real quick goes, well, you're a turducken. You look good on paper, but you, you, you ain't right. <laughs> She's like, you're real complicated. Everyone's like, ooh, turduckins here. Can't wait. And then you're like, wait, is that three types of fowl in that? Ugh, I don't feel so good. I want something else. And I was like, that's the funniest thing she's ever said. Yeah, you kind of are a turduckin. Who do you, you think you'd call what? when your dad dies? I think about this a lot. I think about it a lot. I think like when I get phone calls from like my dad's office, I go, oh, fuck, it's, it's on. Um. Is he in pretty good health now? Yeah, he's got he's got hip surgery coming up. Okay. Uh, he almost died. He almost died recently. I remember this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm probably gonna be alone. I probably want to be alone. Mm -hmm. I want to. I, I, I probably. I was alone. I was alone. I mean, not immediately. I was alone. Here's what I was alone. I was alone the night before, and I knew it was on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I think I. I definitely made couple phone calls i definitely talked about it but i was pretty selective i'm probably the wrong person to call when your dad's about to die because i'll just pivot and tell you my story of my dad probably yeah <laughs> that's probably why i didn't call you but i um no i really appreciated the the calls that i had that i did make and then the next day i was with family um and then yeah i mean no, then everybody came out, you know, funeral stuff. So I remember I think of the thing your dad told you before he died all the time mm. is life goes on, buddy. Yeah. Life goes on. Yeah. I think of that. I think of that probably once a week. I think of that. I think about it too. It's true. It goes on. Yeah. Cause sometimes I'll think like, oh, what if I die right now or today? And then that quote will enter my head. I'll be like, yeah, the world goes on. It's crazy that I just take this podcast over and make it mine. One bear, one cave. Hmm. And just solo. And I'll do, what I'll do is I'll use found footage of you. Yeah. Or backlogged footage of you and continue with you just listening. Oh, and I'll just have me like nodding, nodding. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> nodding. And I'll have you start sentences. Yeah. And then I'll just cut you off. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Can we do that, guys? The day Tom dies. I think you already do. Can we do a, what? What was that? I was going to say, I think that's pretty much how the show already goes, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Turn your mic off. The, uh. <laughs> Where the fuck's Nadab when you need him? <laughs> He's on the front lines, actually. What? Yeah, he flew back to fight. Are you being serious? No. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what, are they just blocking bullets? <laughs> no. No. Um, I wonder two things. I wonder if I'll go straight to a bottle. You know? When your dad dies? Yeah. Yeah. Or if I won't totally at all. Yeah, there's no way just go, I'm going to feel it. Yeah. I'm going to feel it. I'll be there. I'll be present. I'll be there for everyone else. I'll probably swallow it. And then, uh, and then I'll, it'll rear its head one fucking ugly evening. Yeah. That's how it works. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, like it's how it works differently for everybody. Some people are really in the moment grieving their hardest. And then some people, and then it just affects you over time. I mean, it still affects me. It's just like, it affects you when you don't expect it to. That's the, that's the thing is you can't really control it. Really? Yeah, like situations, someone you talk to, something, something you think about, something you say, something somebody else says. Like the grief affects you, everybody differently. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. So wait, wait, where am I on the call sheet? I guess it, it'll be number one, but it'll be quick. Yeah, a quick one. Yeah, I'll be like, hey, it happened. And then you'll be like, oh yeah, I'll be like, yeah, I'll talk to you later, click. Okay. And then... I'll probably, and then I'll probably just go into some cave time and just disappear. I've thought about disappearing. So, you know, so crazy when I was at my like wildest when we were, you know, this last year and I was the heaviest and drinking hard and really going out and getting after it. I thought about disappearing all the time. Like this Dave Chappelle go to South Africa. I okay. thought about it 
all the time. It'd be nice, right? Just, I don't have that feeling at all. I love being present right now. I love like being dialed in. I love that. I love that. I, I, I love this and I know that it will go away again. I know mm-hmm. that I know how my, I operate. Yeah. I know I'll gain weight back. That's how it always works. I'll fucking get after Thanksgiving. I'll be like, fuck it. But I love being present. I love getting up and feeling good and feeling like going like, oh, let's go to the gym. Let's, let's, oh, I'm going to write. Like this morning I got up and I wrote and I was like, I saw, I watched your promo video where you skateboard with Tony Hawk and I was yeah. like, oh, it's so inspiring. Like I love, I love, uh, you know, what I loved about that, your video today, and it's, it's a little late, so everyone's probably already seen it, yeah. but it's the one where you skateboard with Tony Hawk and you end up hurt. I love, love that I saw that and I felt inspired. Like, that is the coolest fucking feeling that I saw that and I went, fuck, that's good. First person I texted was you. Yeah. I said, I love your new promo. I love that because I when I see good promos, like Schultz did a great set of promos oh for God. fucking Madison Square Gardens. I mean, that one broke me up. Yeah, that was Big fucking, time. that was great. And it was, but I, I didn't text Schultz. I think he probably gets so many of those, but I, te- I text him throughout the time whenever he does something like that, kind of like, like his Toronto promos were great. Yeah. But I love that I, it inspires me as opposed to gets, makes me shitty. Like exactly. I, That's a healthy response. There's people that see that and they're like, oh, fuck him. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I got a tour. I got to promote a tour. I love that it inspired me and I got up I went down, I got a coffee, sat in my room, and I started writing, like just writing because I'm I trying to get this new hour. So I'm like, I'm like, I don't have it yet. And so I, te- I was like texting my, my daughters. I was like, I need a, I'm missing a story mm-hmm. out of this special. I need a story. Like what story is good? And they always keep saying the same ones, but I'm like, no, nah, they're, they're not like fucking there yet. And so like, but I love that it inspired me that I'm like, I'm getting in the gym. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go, oh, we got a big night tonight. We're going to party. Like I love that. That's where I am as opposed to the feeling. And I said this today when I went to the gym at the hotel I was at. Mm-hmm. I said, do you know how many times I got into this gym hung over? And I just said, I would love to go to just disappear to Paris for fucking seven days. No one knows where the fuck I go. Yeah. Go to a hotel room, fucking sleep for like three days, start drinking white wine, get in a car, disappear into the countryside. Like I, it was so crazy that I was literally that I would have those thoughts when I'd come here and I would be like, it, it, it's so bizarre. Mm-hmm. I thought about disappearing a lot. I think I'll probably disappear. Oh, I guess I'll go do the funeral and then I'll disappear when my dad dies. Yeah. Do something crazy. How, I'll have people worried about me. Make Good. it about me. You know me. It's on brand. It's on brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I've, by the way, I have to tell you. Yeah. Out of all the podcasts we've done in this studio, this is my favorite one we've ever done. Really? Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, I don't know why. I just really, I feel very present and connected to you. It's good. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Do you notice a change in me? I mean, I have noticed a change since, I mean, I don't get to see you that often. So we, we text and we talk sometimes, but I mean, physically definitely notice a change. Like it's, it was, it's good and you need it. Isn't it amazing how my body just rebounds? That like I look physically, physically. Gorgeous. Like I'm 25. Yeah. Like it's overweight is 25, thought. but my body, yeah. like abs are showing up. My fucking arms are cut. My chest just fucking taut, taut. I did fifties. I did fifties for strict press, uh, 12 times, four times today. What? Yeah. 50, 50 pounds on each arm, uh-huh. strict press, 12 times, four r- r- rounds. Okay. I'm fucking amazed at myself. Do you ever see the scene where Bruce Willis in that movie where he's the superhero, where his son keeps putting weight on the on the machine, and and they're on the in the they're downstairs, and his son it's called Unbreakable. You ever seen Unbreakable? Yeah, yeah. When Bruce Willis finds out that he's a superhero, mm-hmm. and his son's just putting more on the rack, and then he goes, "I can't. I'm gonna get hurt." And he's like, "Dad, try it," and he just keeps lifting more weight. That's what I feel like every fucking day, every day. And I know I'm delusional, but god damn it, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's Look at this. Look at that. Fucking Jesus. Arm. Gorgeous. God damn it. The skin is so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there's someone that knows I'm a little bit joking, but then everyone knows I think he's kind of serious? Yeah. They kind of go, he's kind of serious. My teeth is what I'd fix. Gold fronts. Edgerton James. Edgerton? Edgerton. 
Edgerin. That's his name. I call him Edge. Yeah. He, I get I get implanted all golds. Yeah. All golds. That's tight. You should do it. Fucking badass. Never have to right brush now. again. Yeah. Clean up the uh, the rest of the toilet with the gold fronts. At least put on like the you know grills the piece. Yeah. We should get grills. It's very doable. For real? We're in Texas. Let's go hit Paul Wall up. Paul Wall. Yeah. I do it. Let's do it, man. Hey, great episode, Tom. I love you. I love you too, man. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.